Now before we look at the second graphical method for determining the values of a and n in a function of the form y equals a x to the n, we first need to recap some of the work we did on logarithms in the algebra topic. Now first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to take logs of each side of this equation. So log each side. Now if we take logs of the left hand side, what we're going to be left with is log of y. And if we take logs of the right hand side, we're going to be left with log a x to the n. But one of our log laws stated the following. It stated that log a b is the same as log a plus log b. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify that equation, just the right hand side, and it's going to become log of y equals log of a plus log of x to the n. Now the reason I can do that is because what we have inside this brackets is we have a times x to the n. So I've treated a as the value a and I've treated x to the n as the value b and then all I've done is apply the log law that we see there. Now there is a second simplification that we can do and the second simplification comes about because of the following log law that states that log a to the n is the same as n log a. Now I'm going to apply that to this bracket and this term here. So what I can do this time is I can modify that equation again. So I'm going to have log of y equals log of a plus n log x. If we look at this equation here, what we can do is compare that to the equation for a straight line. And hopefully you recall that the equation for a straight line is y equals mx plus c, which is the same as saying y equals c plus mx. All I've done is switch those two terms so it appears in a similar format to our log equation. Now what we can see, remember on linear graphs, this value of c here was our intercept with the y-axis. That's just a number. Well, log of a is also going to just be a number. Those two terms there are comparable. And here we've got m, which on a linear graph represents the gradient. Well, here we've got n, which on our log graph represents the gradient. So essentially what we've done by logging each side of our original equation up here is we've converted that into an equation in the linear form. y equals c plus mx, or log y equals log a plus n log x. So when we plot this, what we'll notice is that we can determine the intercept of the y-axis, and we can determine our gradient. Now the advantage of doing it this way is what we'll be doing, once we determine our log x and our log y values, we can actually plot this on standard graph paper. I'll show you this as an example, and again, hopefully this will clarify the reasons why we can take logs of each side in order to generate a straight line graph. So here we are on Excel, and we have our function of the original form, y equals ax to the n here, but we also have the equation after we've taken logarithms of each side and applied our log laws. So it's this equation here that's highlighted that we'll be using to determine a and n later in this tutorial. Now, if you recall, the first step that we said that we would need to take is to take logarithms of all of our x-coordinates and to take logarithms of all of our y-coordinates. Now, if you didn't have access to Excel, then you would need to do this manually. You would do log of 0 and input the value here. You'd do log of 1 and input the value here, and so on. All we're doing is we're taking logs of each of those x-coordinates. And then for this column here, you would do exactly the same with each of the y-coordinates. Now for simplicity and for speed, I'm going to do this using the formula functions in Excel. So here I'm going to have equals log, and I'm taking logs of our x-coordinates. And in this box here, I'm taking log of our y-coordinates, so equals log 
and our y coordinate there. Now the reason why both of those return an error is because log of zero returns an irrational number. It can't be resolved. So that's what we would expect in this case. But when we paste those formulas down to the bottom, we see now that log of one is zero. We see, for example, log of four is 0 0.6. We see, for example, log of 40.5 is 1.6 and so on. I'm going to set both of these columns to two decimal places so that I have something that's easier for me to plot. And then we can begin plotting these, remember this time, on standard graph paper. So if we look at our two sets of data, we have log x values and we have log y values. So instead of x and y axes, we're going to have log x and we're going to have log y because our data is log x and log y. Our log x values range from 0 to 0 0.9. So each one of these increments, if we begin at 0, we're then going to go 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way up to 0 0.9. Now you probably recall in a previous tutorial I explained that you want to try and maximise the page as much as possible. You want this graph to be as big as possible so it becomes easier to read your A and your N values later on. Now our log y values range from 0 0.5 up to 1.8. So again, on our, y, on our log y axis, we're going to go up this time in 0 0.2 increments. So we've got 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and so on. Now normally, you would write those numbers outside of the space of the graph, but because I'm a little short on space here, and I'm trying to maximise the information on the screen. I'm just going to have to plot those on the axis rather than to the left of the axes. OK, now we're ready to start plotting. So we've got when log x equals 0, log y equals 0 0.52. It's going to be there. We've got when log x equals 0 0.3, log y equals 0 0.94 which is going to be there. When log x equals 0 0.48, log y equals 1.19. So we've got 4.8 and 1.19. We're somewhere around there. When log x equals 0 0.6, log y equals 1.36. is there. When log x equals 0 0.7, log y equals 1.5. When log x equals 0 0.78, log y equals 1.61. Somewhere around there. And when log x equals 0 0.85, log y equals 1.7. And finally, when log x equals 0 0.9, log y equals 1.78. So once again, you'll notice that we have a straight line graph. So if we plot that through... Now we can determine our variables. So what we can see this time, if we look at this point here, our intercept, our intercept is represented by this point here. Okay, so our intercept is log a equals 0 0.52. The reason it's log a is because our scale is log y, and our intercept is log a. So in order to determine a, we need to do the inverse function of log, which is 10 to the x each side. This would have been covered in the algebra topic once again. 
So this time, if we've got log a, and then we apply 10 to the power of x to that, we're just going to be left with a. It's the inverse function. And our right-hand side is going to become 10 to the power of 0.52. Well, 10 to the power of 0.52 on your calculator is 3.31. Now hopefully you remember that that was the value that we had for A using the previous method. Next we need to determine our gradient. Now to determine our gradient we need to pick two points on our line. And this time I'm going to pick this point here. I'm going to call that point 1. And I'm going to pick the point at the top which I'm going to call point 2. So this here is point 2. And point 1 is when x equals 0.3, so that point there. Now this time, if you notice, there's no log applied to our n value. n sits on its own, so it's a true gradient this time, whereas using the previous method, we had to take the logarithmic gradient. So this time, n equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Therefore, n equals, well, the y-coordinate of point 2, this is point 2 down here, so the y-coordinate is 1.78, minus the y-coordinate of point 1, well, this line here represents point 1, so the y-coordinate is 0.94. Now, the x-coordinate of point 2 is 0 0.9, and the x-coordinate of point 1 is 0 0.3. Now, when we run those numbers through our calculators, we get 1.4. Which, once again, is the same value that we got in the previous example. So, just to finish this off then, we have A equals 3.3 to one decimal place. N equals 1.4 to one decimal place. And we have an equation of the form. Remember, referring back to the original equation, y equals ax to the n. Therefore, that data represents the equation y equals 3.3x to the 1.4. And once again, just to reiterate, that's the same value we got using the previous method, plotting the original data on log log paper.